Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the best number 11 B2 OFF. This is a replacement shackle only. It is used on their 11B series of padlocks. And what's notable about the 11B is that it's what's called a frangible shackle in the sense that it is, uh, the shackle is otherwise, the shackle is intentionally compromised so that the padlock will operate like a normal padlock. However, should extreme stress be put on the padlock body with the intention of breaking the shackle, it will give way and break. That's the, what the term frangible means. You'll see frangible shackles used in fire extinguisher cabinets where you want to prevent the you know, unintentional accessing of the fire extinguisher by having a lock there, but you know, should someone put a wrench on the padlock um, with the intention of breaking the padlock so as to get in, that's the exact purpose of the shackle being frangible. So whatever someone is in, uh, using these frangible shackles on, as the manufacturer states, you want to prevent casual entry, but not you know absolutely prevent someone from getting in with a with with a tool, and that's what these are for. Okay, replacement shackle, obviously uh, being frangible, uh, the ability to have access to replacement shackles is the entire uh, role of the frangible shackle. They're meant to be broken, which means you're obviously going to replace them. Let's take some dimensional properties of this shackle. The diameter is 0.25, so a quarter inch on the nose. The inside dimension 0 0.867, 0 0.867. I don't know the height, uh, but we'll look at the catalog and see if we can determine uh, what that shackle height is. Got about 0 0.2035 from here to here, 0 0.2035. And then that same dimension on the overall length looks like it's about 3.483, 3.483 from here down to here. Let's switch now to the screen view and let's take a closer look at the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here's the item that we are looking at. Okay, The extended description tells us the frangible shackle padlock is designed for fire and safety equipment cabinets where casual entry is to be prevented. For more information on the 11B, refer to the padlock section, which we'll do in a moment. Broken shackles are easily replaced on site and may be ordered separately. A complete extra frangible shackle kit, including three extra frangible shackles, three extra shackle springs, and a disassembly tool may be ordered by adding the suffix K to the catalog number. This is a bronze base material. It's the only way that this is available. Um, you know, if you had a base material of steel, um, maybe less less frangible, obviously. So let's look at the cut sheet first. Uh, this is just a review of the information already provided, but it's there for your review. Then the product the product brochure, and this will show us um, the. Uh, padlock service equipment is what's here. Let's get down to page 11. Okay, so the purpose of this is the tool uh, is something handy to have when you are servicing the padlocks. Items included in this BD640 repair kit um, are essential to work on the 11B, 21B, 41B uh, series padlocks. Okay, Now, let's take a look at the uh, product brochure from Best for the catalogs themselves. Let's do that. Let's do that now. Okay, so let's take a look at the links down below here, uh, also to the parts drawing, which we have here. Uh, here it is, parts drawing. So, exploded diagram what we have here, we're looking at part number one, and let's go to page two and look at the table. So we have two frangible shackles listed here in, for part 
uh, item one, frangible shackle for inch and a half opening and one for a four inch opening. Okay, so that's handy because you can see that there are only two frangible shackle sizes available. Now when we look at the cut sheet, which is also linked to down below here, and here it is, um, this is the frangible shackle for the 11B720. So we're dealing with an 11B720. It has to be under brass shackle. Um, it ha because we're dealing with a brass shackle, it, it has to be a 2-0, uh, which is inch and a half. An inch and a half is going to be that dimension here. Looking at the shackle only, um, you know, it's hard to know exactly where that shackle, you know, how far, um, you know, the frangible portion must sit right above the body, and then the rest of the shackle must penetrate down here. So uh, this cut sheet will allow you to review the uh, 11B in totality, uh, and that parts drawing is going to help you understand what it is as well. Then there's also a link to the below this video to the cut sheet, pardon me, the product brochure, which is an overview of everything B series related. Um, and I will leave that up to you to discover more about these padlocks. Uh, you know, obviously the notable thing about these padlocks is that they work within the entire best small format interchangeable core ecosystem. So you'll have a cohesive keying system regardless of the lock type, whether it be an exit device trim or a grade one lever lock or it be you know a trailer hitch lock a best makes those as well or padlocks um, etc okay so variations on the padlock theme is what they have here uh, chains are not uncommon as well to order from the factory and then that frangible shackle kit we had mentioned earlier uh, you'll find that the, having that tool is going to be i've never serviced these padlocks in the sense of servicing them I have taken them apart, and uh, I've done so without the tool and found that to be a um, less than uh, efficient use of my time to service a padlock without the right tool. So if you're going to do it, order the 11BFK. Okay, now there's also a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page when you click on that. Our manufacturer's page will open. This will allow you to review not only all of the best products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Uh, firing that up is uh, 344 pages of everything best related. And uh, what's notable about best naturally is that they are Frank Best uh, patented the small format core. I think he came up with it, um, you know, a few years before he, he decided to have it patented. He applied for the patent in 1919 for the small format interchangeable core concept granted on 1920, in 1921 and began the entire revolution of cores that you could immediately and without much trouble um, re re remove and replace. So you have instantaneous control over who has rights and privileges through that door lock uh, by means of removing or extracting the core and replacing it with one key differently. The common example is, of course, um, you know, the termination of an employee where those cores can be turned over at that moment um, to prevent uh, re-entry. Now this concept that they have here is not the modern interchangeable core from Best uh, because it requires a the key being pulled out in uh, one chamber. And what you'll study here is when the key is inserted fully, and by the way, these ball bearings, that was the, that was the common um, means by which you would combinate cylinders during this period, the early 20th century, the very, maybe the late, very late 19th century. Um, I believe that Cor P.F. Corbin uh, was the originator of these ball bearings, and the concept is this. The, this first chamber in the world of best, this would be the fifth chamber, but the first chamber that your key tip encounters is right here. This pin stack is going to act on this cut, this cut, this cut, this cut, this cut. This is going to get a lot of wear versus the, the chamber furthest away, this is only going to encounter one cut in the key. 
So this gets orders of magnitude more use than this will. So the ball bearings were added because the material science of the com uh, of the tumblers was such that they would wear out with high volume use. So the ball bearings created a near frictionless sort of scenario uh, that allowed to compensate for the poor material science. This was definitely phased out um, in the years and, and few decades after this period uh, as material science improved in the pin tumblers. Anyway, that ignore the fact that the ball bearings are there. They're only there for that compensation. But imagine this all being one tumbler. This tumbler here, which would be a, it'd be a B segment um, in an A2 system, sitting on, riding on top of this uh, ball bearing. But you'll notice this line right here, everything is lined up. That's called a shear line right here. That key will turn. This plug here will completely turn inside of the entire housing. You'll notice there's a line up here, 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 here. That's the uh, control shear line. It's not shear because the pins are blocking it. When you pull that key out one position, it then will create a shear line at the control shear line, allowing you to retract the core, or pardon me, extract the core. What I think Best found that he needed to do was change the design because people were finding cores coming out in their hand when they had pulled the key out unintentionally one position and then made rotational you know, force on the, on the key. But that's the concept. This is a dual shear line idea that I think Best would have also have gotten from P.F. Corbin from their master ring. Um, I'm sure Frank Best would have been extremely familiar with all technologies during, you know, the post immediate post World War One uh, lock world, and that's where this came up. I'm sure of it. Um, also on this page will be other encyclopedic documents. And the name BEST is synonymous with encyclopedic documents. The A2 and A4 key systems training manual is there. Quick reference to combinating BEST cores. This uh, is actually found uh, in the underside of the metal lid of your combinating kit from BEST. If you have a pin kit, it's all there. This, this along with the... A2 and A4 key systems training, it, you can teach yourself how to core, key, and pin, combinate small format cores. Um, I, I did so nearly 30 years ago, and I did need to call the factory, although I called Falcon because I had a direct account with Falcon, because I just needed to get pushed over the hump on making sure what I was doing was right. And then I needed to call back to say, why is it not doing this right? Um, and uh, the gentleman there was extremely helpful. Um, anyway, uh, Best invented the entire thing. Clones like Falcon, Arrow, and countless others are simply copies of this original brilliance. Um, over ta uh, Taking the t dual shear line concept and making it do something different as well. Um, there you go. So encyclopedic documents are, are here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, now without going too much further into the world of combinating best cores, here's your frangible shackle. Uh, and that inch and a half, we'll just put our tape measure somewhere in here to see where that's going to fall. Yeah. You can kind of see Yeah, that frangible portion is going to sit right at the base of the padlock. Without really scrutinizing it, you would never know it's a frangible sha uh, uh, shackle. Any questions on the 11B20FF frangible shackle? Bronze, they call it brass. Um, you know, it's an alloy of copper, zinc, tin, whatever makes up this exact uh, alloy that this, this shackle is made from. Any questions on this or any other best product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.